Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV and I'm Deepan G. So instead of me going through the picture comparison between the iPhone 12 and also the Pixel 5 myself, I'll be getting a fellow tech enthusiast, which is Steven, to join me to give that sort of a second person's perspective. Now, in case you guys do not know and have been living under a rock, Steven is an actor famously known for two very well-known films on Netflix, which is Pascal and All Because of You. And he is a huge tech geek, oh, yeah. just like myself. And that's the reason why we're connected as friends. So, Steven, are you ready? Let's do this, man. Now first, let's look at the camera specs. The iPhone 12 has a 12 megapixel f1.6 26mm wide lens and a 12 megapixel f2.4 ultra wide angle lens. Then the Pixel 5 has a 12.2 megapixel f1.7 27mm wide lens and a 16 megapixel f2.2 ultra wide angle lens. Now, instead of us taking both phones and looking at the phones to compare both pictures side by side, we are using the referee of this comparison, which is the Huawei MateBook, which has 100% sRGB high color gamut to get the best color accuracy as possible for us to kind of compare both photos side by side. So let's first check out the wide angle lens. So based on this, what do you think? Now here, this particular image, I think the Pixel is doing a better job, especially if you look at the highlights here. Okay. On the top and in the clouds section there. Correct. And also, the iPhone looks a little bit more warm than than it was earlier when we were taking this picture. So, the Pixel looks a little bit more accurate, in my opinion. Uh, based on us being there, I think uh, since we took the photos, although the iPhone has a better wide-angle camera in terms of the lens, but I personally think that, you know, in terms of the image quality, it does look mm -hmm. better. So that would be for this picture number one. So let's just check out a picture number two. Okay, I didn't see this one earlier. Now, this is my first time looking at these pictures on the laptop. And yeah, right from the get-go, it's the same thing that was with the other uh, ultra wide lens as well. The iPhone has a very warm hue to it. Pixel 5 overall has a more pleasing image, I think. Now let's look at the main lens instead. Okay, so we have another picture of a building, similar picture to earlier. What do you have to say about this? Wow, now this is harder to do. Okay, okay, so for the main lens, I'm gonna pick out the top left corner here where the antenna is. Oh yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, yeah and okay. that pixel does look a little bit more, the, the highlights are a little bit more blown out than the iPhone. Yep. Um, on the iPhone is doing a better job than the ultra wide lens for sure. Although compared side by side with the pixel, it's really hard to pick a winner. That's a good point. Um, I agree. I think the main lens, uh, this one does not have that weird color shift. You noticed yes. it looks a bit more natural. Okay, for the next picture, we have Thieben and he's having his hot chocolate and he is indoors instead of taking all the shots outdoors. Um, which one do you prefer between these two main lenses? Pixel 5, easy, easy uh, picture here because the picture on the iPhone looks a little bit, I don't know, I want to say a little bit less sharp than it is on the Pixel. The Pixel has very good lighting on the side of my face, on the right side of my face. And also, if you look at the balcony in the right side of the image, and also the clouds, the highlights on the iPhone are a little bit more blasted. So I totally agree with Taben on this. Uh, I can see you're right about the back. It looks like as though there's another fill light at the back towards your ears area, which kind of gives you a very nice kind of pleasing image overall. The iPhone surprisingly looks like a cheaper phone. Like, you know, you would take a picture from a like a, you know, like a mid-range to a lower range phone, you get something like this. So maybe the iPhone's main camera's um, indoor shots is not as superior compared to the Pixel. Mm -hmm. So that would be based on our test. Now being the kind of person who really likes the portrait mode for the Pixel cameras, and I've actually used the Google Pixel 2 XL as my yeah. main camera. But Tiban over here is one of the guys who uses both at all times. Like he uses an Android phone and also an iPhone. Okay. So that's one of the reasons why I call him here because he actually knows how it is when it comes to those two phones using as a daily driver. So let's check out the portrait mode instead. Okay, now for this image, um, it's a little bit harder for me because the Pixel does look a little bit more pleasing to my eyes. Although I know that the iPhone is way more color accurate than the Pixel is because um, my, my t-shirt is not as saturated. The yellow now on the Pixel is really saturated. And also the blue on my cap is not as accurate as my cap in real life. 
the iPhone is doing a better job at keeping the photo as natural as possible, then again, it really comes down to personal preference and what you like. In terms of the color reproduction, I agree with you, but uh, I kind of like how the portrait mode on a pixel kind of crops in nicer. You are right about the whole t-shirt thing, and I also noticed that there's a bit more shadows on the pixel portrait mode. This, I don't think there's a clear winner. This actually comes down to a personal preference, like what Thibon mentioned, so if you like both of the photos, then you will be satisfied with the portrait mode, but let's see another photo and see now for this particular shot, we have actually gotten a bit closer to see how it is when it comes to like a hit shot kind of look. I like how the iPhone portrait mode here looks. I like the colors coming from the iPhone, but when it comes to the subject to background blur and also really defining the contour of your face, the Pixel did a way better job when it comes to that. That's a wonderful way of putting it, de defining the subject from the foreground to the background. The Pixel is doing a really good job. Full disclosure though, it was really hot outside, that's why I'm squinting. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I would like to point out the, the underside of my cap, mm. where both phones are doing a really good job. So choosing a winner here, it really just comes down to what you like in a picture. But what you mentioned earlier about the pixel really cropping in a little bit more and giving you a more, I want to say, cinematic look is extremely accurate, I think. All right, let's look at the regular selfie shots okay we have the iphone on the left as usual and the pixel on the right so tiban what do you have to say about this pixel 5. <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say <laughs> why <laughs> um like the skin tone right um naturally i think my skin tone is a little bit closer to the pixel 5 than it is on the iphone also if i look at the skin tone i do like what i'm seeing on the pixel 5 a little bit more but my eyes definitely prefer the image on the pixel 5. The thing is that on the phone, when I look at the screen, the iPhone look better. <laughs> but when you put it in post like this, and overall a pleasing image again, uh, skin tones is perfect. It is exactly how it was because although it was cloudy, but the overall image, like how your skin tone was exactly like this. For some strange reason, the selfie shots for the iPhone looked a bit more darker in terms of the skin tones. like. I think this is the HDR kicking in. So yeah, I would say the Pixel 2 for the regular selfie. All right, now let's look at the portrait selfie. Again, I'm going to go with the Pixel 5. This is because of the background blur. Agreed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the subject to background blur ratio here on the Pixel 5 is a lot better than it is on the iPhone. You can fix this in post, but then again, getting a picture right off the bat from your phone without having to edit it at all, I think the Pixel 5 is a uh, it's a winner here. I agree. I've always mentioned about how Pixel phones had great subject to background blur, not only for the rear portrait mode, but also for the front. And that is the case over here. And you can see that the iPhone portrait selfie on the left, it's very blown out, uh, especially towards the top of the cap area. However, I like to point out when it comes to the colors of the cap, you can see it is a bit more color accurate on the iPhone compared to the Pixel's portrait mode. But again, people would like to see a pleasing image at one glance. And yeah, in one glance, immediately it shows the Pixel's capabilities when it comes to the portrait selfie mode. The iPhone is doing a better job when it comes to edge detection. Um, right sleeve and also my right earlobe, where it's a little bit more blurry on the Pixel 5 than it is on the iPhone. So edge detection, I think, goes to the iPhone. Okay, touching into the selfie, this time around is the color accuracy of this particular very cute little cap. Now, what do you have to say about when it comes to color accuracy compared to the Pixel and the iPhone? If you're talking solely about color accuracy, I'm going to say it's the iPhone. That's exactly the color that is on my head right now. And cute cap, right? <laughs> So when it comes to the night shots, I've mentioned on the iPhone 12 mini review they've done, there's no dedicated night mode. So that could be a huge bummer, correct? Oh yeah, because I use both phones, right? So naturally when I'm out at night, I naturally take out my Pixel phone because it has a dedicated night mode and that is really important for me because if I want to turn it on or off, I have that option. Now the iPhone doesn't have one. I'm not saying though that the iPhone's night mode is not as good as the Pixel. It's just that this ease of use, when it gives me the option to turn it on or off, that is a huge plus for me. 
But based on the pictures that I've seen over here, I think the overall image processing, in my humble opinion, looks way better on the Pixel 5 as the night sight that Pixel has done. Ever since they introduced this, they have been quite close to what Huawei has done for their low light shots. And if I really had to choose between the iPhone or the Pixel 5 when it comes to the night mode or the night sight, I would give it with the Pixel 5. Now, as for the phone's video, both phone records up to 4K 60 frames per second, both for the rear and also for the front camera. Okay, generally video taking capabilities, I always take my iPhone out, always no doubt. But based on what I'm looking at right now, pixels have come a long way since they released their first pixel phone for video. Stabilization on the Pixel 5 is absolutely amazing. It really blows your mind away. Also, if you notice the dynamic range here, the entire video on the iPhone is a little bit more blown out because of the sky and the clouds. You know, I have to agree because I've done the iPhone 11 Pro versus the Samsung Galaxy Note video review on the comparison. And what I've learned is that when I see side by side, when I take both phones, the images look different, the video quality looks different, but again, once you put it in post, which I'll leave a link down below for you guys to download every single video and also the pictures so you can do your comparison yourself, which I feel that I was actually quite blown away by the results that I've seen, which is available in post. So if you guys are just posting these videos up on Instagram and stuff like that, it might be okay. But if you're looking for a bit more serious, like you want to take a video of your holiday sessions and you know, like you may do a bit more work in your post-production as opposed to just taking a video and just not thinking about it. Yeah. So yeah. Okay, so Tiban, the thing is that you know how front video camera is important, especially for people like me and you yeah. who are always on Instagram. Follow oh, him, yeah. I'll leave a link down Please. here for you guys to follow Tiban on Instagram. We use Instagram stories a lot and it's very important for us to have a very powerful front video camera. Yeah. So based on this footage, what do you have to say? I'm going to say on the pixel, it looks like I'm floating in front of a green screen because the stabilization is out <laughs> of this world. <laughs> really don't know what kind of sorcery the pixel is using in their videos. Now the iPhone video looked really amazing on the phone itself, which is most likely where most of you are going to be viewing these videos that you take. For most use case scenarios, the iPhone video and the pixel video will most probably be able to go head to head um, against each other. But when you do something like this and compare it side by side, the color and the stabilization on the Pixel have come a long way. So yeah, with this, I think that, you know, a lot of people who think that the iPhone is the king of videos, this might give you a different perspective of things, especially even t before this, he was using the iPhone as his main video camera. Most yeah. probably he's going to be using the <laughs> Pixel now instead. But yes, this does come down to what exactly you use it for. I also found that when it comes to playing back the files, uh, playing back the pixel files on the MP4 format was way better compared to the .mov files that the iPhone has when it comes to the playback as well. So keep that in mind in case you guys are looking to play back all of the videos on your laptop because you might have some problems when it comes to playing back the videos. But if you guys are just using this for social media, it should be totally fine on both cameras. Alright guys, so in conclusion, let's first see what t has to say. If I put a gun to your head right now, I said, t you have to choose either one of the phones when it comes to the camera capabilities. Let's not talk about which has a better battery life and which has a better software experience. From a camera's perspective, which one would you totally choose at this point in time? Okay, leading up to today, I solely use my iPhone for videos and Pixel for pictures. Okay. Surely this is how I do it. I, okay. I had a formula, all done. If you put a gun to my head and ask me to choose between the two, solely based on their camera performance, after what I've seen, it looks like the Pixel will be a better choice. The Pixel 5. It looks like. Although, this is my use case. Like Adam mentioned earlier, I use my phone mostly for videos and photos on Instagram because that's kind of what I do, right? Now, integration between software and hardware on the iPhone definitely plays a huge part in this as opposed to software integration between software and hardware on an Android phone, right? But if I'm just looking solely at the camera performance when it comes to photos and videos, I'm going to take the Pixel 5. Very good point. <laughs> um, I am gonna 
agree at certain points with him and disagree on certain points. From a software perspective, when it comes to integration, I totally agree that iPhone was okay. was the best when it comes to having a better Instagram compression. Uh, the overall flow is fine, but that was quite a while back. Like even when I change into the iPhone's camera, a lot of people don't even know the difference. And when I change back to a flagship phone like the Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, people go like, wow, what camera is that? Prior to that, I was actually using the iPhone and no one actually noticed that. So it was the case, not for every other smartphones, maybe for Pixel is fine because it's a Google device. But if you're using maybe like a Xiaomi device, not all of the devices can play well with the Instagram compression. Some of it really come out very bad. But yes, throughout the whole iPhone or iOS devices, it is totally fine when it comes to that. When I reviewed the iPhone 12 mini, I was very impressed with the photo performance. So this could be the beginning of how the iPhone's camera is going back to be the king, especially when it comes to video. I think both of us were equally shocked when we saw the video capabilities okay. on the Pixel 5. A lot of people used to doubt the Pixel 5's video cameras, especially for the 4, which is bad. That's why the Chinese people say number 4 is a bad number. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true because the Pixel 5, although it does not have the highest Snapdragon processor, but you know, let's talk about Pixel 5 very quickly before we wrap this video. Uh, what is your experience like? Let's put iPhone aside. Should Malaysians buy the Pixel 5? Because I created the Pixel 4a video, reasons for you to get and reasons not for you to get. You can check out at the link at the description below or even at the card above. There were reasons why I feel that people should get the Google Pixel 4a and should not get it. But if you were to advise somebody, would you recommend them to get the Google Pixel 5? Okay, in my honest opinion, when Google launched the Google Pixel 5, I was a little bit disappointed because I heard Snapdragon 765G, right? Everybody was most probably disappointed. Adam, you were most probably disappointed as well. Because now, technically, when it comes to specs, the 865 is on top and then we have the 765, right? In my mind, immediately, I'm thinking that the 765G is not as good a processor as the 865G, right? That is not the case, however, because I still decided to get the phone. And when I got the phone, I was completely blown away by its performance. Now, I'm not a gamer or anything like that. I use my phone solely for my daily productive tasks. I use it for Instagram, uh, my, the camera, of course, chatting, uh, Facebook every now and then, and some internet browsing. I have not been able to kill the phone in one day. Absolutely not. I have tried everything. <laughs> it is absolutely impossible to kill this phone in one day. The battery life is that good, right? So if you ask me if you guys should get the Google Pixel 5, definitely. In my opinion, Google has created a winner in the Pixel 5 and everybody should at least experience what this phone has to offer. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching and hope you guys found this video helpful in making your purchase decision. If you guys are of course looking to either buy the iPhone 12 or the Google Pixel 5 as well. Don't forget to follow t -Burn on Instagram for you guys to get some behind the scenes shots, especially during his movies and what exactly that he likes from a tech perspective if you guys are into that. With this, we like to say thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam Lobo. And I'm Deepan G. And we will catch you guys in our next video. iPhone. Hey guys, Adam Lobo here from Adam Lobo TV and... Okay, that's why I joined. Yeah, that's why you come in, huh? Okay. okay. Um, although... <coughs> <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs>